I'm trying to steal my boss away from his wife. Welcome to Storytimes with Esther, where you send me your story time and I tell them here on TikTok. This all started out as a dare at an office party three months ago. When I got hired, I had a really small position. Then I got promoted to being an assistant. Let me just clarify something. My boss is ugly. He is not my type. He's older. He's like not really fit. But at the office party, I found out that he's a serial cheater. He has a wife he's been married to for 30 years. And apparently he has about three girlfriends because he's their sugar daddy. Now clearly my coworkers are bored. These two girls started daring me to go out with him or to at least start flirting with him to see where I could go because they have a theory that he would try to be my sugar daddy. At first I was totally against this. I would never jeopardize my job. And my coworker confessed she used to be one of his sugar babies and that he started giving her $5,000 a month. Now to me that sounds pretty good. I have two kids and I'm a single mom and I really wish I could just stay home with them and take care of them. $5,000 is a lot to me because I didn't grow up with much. So I did it. I started flirting with him and about two weeks later he asked me out to lunch. At lunch he offered me money but you'll never guess for what. And trust me it gets worse. You have to go to part two. I'm trying to steal my boss away from his wife. Welcome to Storytimes with Esther, where you send me your story time and I tell him here on TikTok. After two weeks of flirting with him, he fell. He invited me to lunch and started offering me money. But you'll never guess for what. He said that he wanted me to just accompany him to a couple of work events. And that he would pay me extra for that. And when I asked him how much, he said $2,000. So of course I agreed. Remember, I'm a single mom of two. And if my boss wanted me to be his sugar baby, I was never going to say no. After we ended up going to the two events, he asked me out to lunch again because he had a proposal. When we get to lunch, we sit down and he tells me that he likes me and that I'm not like any of the other girls at the office. And he asked me if I would be okay with some extra money if I just spent some time with him. And he told me that his wife is horrible, that his life sucks, and that she's the most evil woman ever. And duh, I accepted. This man offered me $7,000 a month. And he asked me to make a wish list for me and my kids so that he could fulfill it. I couldn't believe my luck. But before I told any of my coworkers, I decided to keep it quiet. What if they tried to use it against me? I did something crazy though. I went to his house and pretended like I needed to drop something off so that I could meet his wife. I wanted to see her. You have to go to part three. I'm trying to steal my boss from his wife. Welcome to Storytimes with Esther, where you send me your story time and I tell it here. After he told me that his wife was a horrible woman, I had to go to their house to find out. Now, part of me was a little bit guilty because he was giving me money in exchange for spending time with him. But if she really is that horrible, why not? When I knocked on the door, she answered and was so rude right away. She asked me who I was and I said I was her husband's assistant. And after talking to her for two minutes, I realized she really is a bitch. That's when I decided that I would completely steal him away from her. I don't even like this man. I'm not even attracted to him. But if he could offer me the life that I need for me and my kids, of course I'm gonna try to steal him. Three months into our arrangement, he had never even touched me. Not until one night, he actually kissed me. Surprisingly, I was okay with it. He confessed that he's in love with me, so I told him that I was too, even though I'm not. I told him that he needed to leave his wife, and he says he will. I hired a private detective to get pictures of her cheating on him because apparently she has affairs, and then he would get a divorce. That way she gets nothing. I know that this can backfire on me, but I'm now able to put my kids in private school, and I quit my job. And the biggest thing, he even bought me a little house. Now I don't even have to pay rent. How can I get him to leave him sooner? What should I- Get ready with me to go out out to the bar with my friends. Usually I'll go to the clubs that are like super busy, but tonight I'm kind of just looking for a chill night where I can just wear my jean shorts and my crop top instead of putting on a whole outfit. And also I really do not feel like having a million other people sweat all over me. I've had a lot of you guys ask me how I do my eyes. So I'm gonna show you how I do like my smoky eyeliner wing. First thing that I do is I go in with Tattoo Studio by Maybelline and I do my waterline. And when I do it on the bottom, I stop like right to where my eye is right there. And then after that, that, I'm gonna go in with eyeliner and I'm just gonna do it very tightly against my lash line and then after I do that I'm gonna make a super small wing and I'm gonna go in with the tattoo liner again I'm gonna make a you know put a little bit right there go in with an angled brush like this and I just start to pull this up and then if I feel like it needs to be a little blended out I'll go in with my beauty blender and I'll just kind of blend it upwards so then it'll end up looking like this. I just did my mascara on this eye and now we're gonna do it on this one. So we're gonna go in with the Lash Sensational Maybelline and I just go and I make sure to close my eyes because I don't wanna put it at the root. When you put it at the root, it weighs your lashes down. And I just got some PR from Makeup by Mario. These are their Moisture Glow Plumping Lip Serums. So I wanna wear one of these tonight. We're gonna try Nude Glow first. Okay, but she's actually kind of cute. This one is Petal Glow. I need to hurry up. 
Let me know what you guys think down below. I mix New Glow with Petal Glow and I kind of like it. Am I the asshole for not wanting to babysit my sister's nightmare child? Disclaimer, this is not my story time. I send me an Instagram. Her child is a terror. He's extremely mean and violent. It's all my sister's fault. And her husband. My family's pretty big. My parents got busy and had six kids. Now my sister and I are the youngest. My sister was the first to get pregnant out of all my siblings, which of course meant that we were super excited. While she was pregnant, she was doted over. All of my siblings took care of her and her husband was amazing. Then the baby was born. By the time he was two years old, he would have fits of violence if he was not given what he wanted. One time we were all sitting at a restaurant and he wanted to eat all of the fries and when my sister said no he grabbed the plate and threw it on the floor my parents have a beautiful dog and this child terrorizes the dog he tries to hit him tries to bite him and the poor dog doesn't do anything to him he's never in a good mood and always tries to find an excuse to hit people he's now four years old and he's even worse he's constantly breaking things doesn't apologize doesn't say please or thank you he grabbed my laptop and threw it into a pool when my sister asked me to babysit i said no and everyone in my family turned against me but it gets worse go to part two Am I the asshole for not wanting to babysit my sister's nightmare child? This class is not my story, Donald, it's not me on Instagram. After he grabbed my laptop and threw it into the pool, I swore I would never speak to him again. Not only did he ruin my computer, but he denied doing it even though I saw him do it. My family had to look at the cameras to see that he actually did it. It's like they refused to believe it even though I told them I saw him. And guess what? My sister made him stand in the corner. That was his punishment. But when my sister asked me to babysit, I said no. And she started to cry saying that I was a bad sister, that she really needed a break from him, that her husband and her just wanted to go have dinner. But she didn't want me to just babysit him for a couple of hours. She wanted him to sleep over at my apartment. When my family found out that I said no to babysitting him, they all got mad at me. My parents called me and told me that I was selfish. And my siblings told me that I needed to help my sister out. That's when I told them that I didn't know what was going to happen if this kid came over to my house. I was scared that he was going to attack me. I think he's capable of setting my house on fire. He knows I don't like him. Now nobody is talking to me. Now I do feel guilty. Did I just lock him in a room with the TV on? I honestly don't know what to do. Am I the asshole for doing this or am I in the right? What do you guys think? Story time about my strict grandma. So a little background information. In January 2023, I was really looking forward to having a sleepover at my friend's house. But my grandma quickly shut that shit down because she said that my friend was quote emo. According to the way my friend dressed. Like early as 2024. Anyways, I tried to argue with her and say that that doesn't mean that she's a bad influence, but my grandma stuck in her ways, just wasn't having it. Instead, she said that I was going to be staying the weekend at my aunt's house with my brother and my cousin. So while I was at my aunt's house, I decided to sneak over to my friend Oliver's house. Get your head out of the gutter. It was nothing like that. We both agreed to be strictly friends. Anyway, so I hung out at his house with him and his brother Connor, and we were giving each other's Instagrams a makeover. Now keep this in mind for later. We ended up changing my username to the Beaner 2.0. Oh, and when I said I snuck over Oliver's house, I mean for my grandma. Like, my aunt knew about everything, but my grandma wasn't watching me, so I didn't care to tell her. Fast forward, the weekend's over, my grandma comes to pick us up, and later on that night, she brings up my Instagram username to me. Like for part- Part two about my super strict grandma. So like I said, my grandma brings up my username, the Beaner 2.0 to me later on that night. She started telling me that she was super concerned about the lack of self-respect I had for myself and how I need to start caring more about what other people thought about me. But honestly, I didn't care. I tried explaining that I didn't mind the term Beaner since I'm half Mexican and I've already faced racism before. So to me, it's just a word. After I explained that, I thought that her and I were good because she stopped arguing with me. And then she starts bringing up my Instagram posts. She's like, who are these boys that you were with? Whose house is this? Blah, blah, blah. Because I guess my aunt had told her that I went over a friend's house, but she didn't specify that it was a boy. So my grandma was fine with it. Anyway, so she had a field day with that shit, and the next day she decided to take my phone away because of the consequences of my actions, claiming that this situation was so serious that she had to get the police involved. This whole situation resulted in me being grounded forever, and we had to start attending family therapy sessions after this. Yeah. My father-in-law is forcing my husband to break up with me. Disclaimer, this is not my story time. It was sent to me on Instagram. This is a three-part story time and I'm doing a full face of pink makeup today. My husband and I have been married for two years. Now, we did get married very, very young. By very young, I mean I was 18 and he was 19. When we started dating in high school, his dad was totally against the relationship. See, my husband was super popular, he played on the football team, all the girls chased him, he also played basketball, and was perfect at everything he did. As you can imagine, was extremely strict with him. He was not even allowed to go out on weekends. Me, on the other hand, my parents are pretty much hippies. They let me do whatever I want. We're all very spiritual. My parents have full trust in me. Because of this, I make smart decisions. I actively seek my parents' advice. I even told my parents I lost my virginity when I did. And we had a big conversation about it. It was not dramatic. It was not like, oh, you shouldn't have done that. They just support me in everything I do. 
Now, my husband's parents are not the same. They tell him not to do a lot of things. They try to control him. So as we were dating in high school, his dad kept telling him to break up with me. He claimed that I was holding him back and that because of me, he spent less time training. Which technically, yes, is true. But at the same time, you cannot stop your son from experiencing human relationships. In fact, he actually broke up with me for two weeks. But then we got back together in secret. Everything culminated when he asked me to marry him right after graduation. His parents were absolutely against it. But my parents were all for it. You guessed it, go to part two. My father-in-law wants my husband to break up with me. Disclaimers is not my story time I sent me on Instagram. This is a three-part story time and I'm doing a full face of pink makeup. When he asked me to marry him right out of high school, his parents absolutely freaked. They went to my parents' house and told me off for saying yes. In other words, they were completely blaming me for the whole thing. As if their own son didn't go buy a ring and ask me to marry him. He even did a beautiful proposal, which he had been planning for months. But at this point, his parents didn't even know that we were boyfriend and girlfriend. When they came to my house, his mom, my now mother-in-law, started crying and yelling at me. She told me that I was ruining their family, that I was trying to steal her son, and that all I really cared about was their money. By the way, my parents were middle class, but we were not destitute. His parents are very rich. They own several businesses, but of course I'm not after their money. That's when they said that if we did end up getting married, I would have to sign a prenup. And duh, I said, yeah, I want to marry him because I'm in love. At this point, his parents knew they couldn't stop us. We were going to get married with or without their approval. But thankfully, his parents came around and let us get married. We had a quaint, small wedding. It was so magical. But his parents wanted him to go to college to play football. In other words, they wanted him to be the next Tom Brady. They made him train for hours, and they didn't even let us live together for the first year we were married. And because they were supporting him, he couldn't say no. They had us on a schedule, could only see him for about two to three hours a day, and we were married. Two years later, he's playing for a football team, but his parents keep thinking that I'm dragging him down. So now they're trying to convince him to leave me. Go to part three. My father-in-law is trying to convince my husband to divorce me. Disclaimer, this is not my story time. And this is the final part of the three-part story time. I'm doing a full face of pink makeup. After a year of us being married, his parents did not allow us to live together because he needed to focus on football. So obviously, I was living with my parents. I was focusing on my own studies, but his parents did allow us to see each other two to three hours a day. Now, you might think my husband is a total pushover. But let me explain something. His parents paid for all of his training and his entire college tuition. They gave him the best of everything. He got sports massages every single day. Day, they even installed a cold plunge in their backyard. They also had a full gym set up where he and his teammates would go work out every single day in their house. Obviously, he did not have time for little old me. After a year of this, I couldn't take anymore. I wanted to be with my husband. So I gave him an ultimatum. Daddy tell his parents that he and I wanted to live together. That's all I wanted. I was even willing to pay for half of the rent. And he told his parents they said fine. And they bought us a house. Obviously under my husband's name, not mine. Fast forward another year up until now. I've heard his dad tell him on several occasions that he needs to divorce me. That he could find a much prettier wife once he becomes bigger in the NFL. And I walked in on his mom telling him that maybe I can't even have kids. And that he he should have me checked. My parents-in-law hate me. I sometimes feel like I am holding him back. They make us miserable. My parents think I should just walk away from the marriage, but I'm too in love. Should I confront my parents-in-law? Help me think of what I should say to them. Ah. Story time about how my ex-boyfriend accused me of cheating on an all-girls trip. So a little background information. I was 14 or 15 around the time, and it was the summer of my freshman year. So within the last few weeks of my eighth grade year, the more popular boys asked me out and we're gonna call him Carson. I wasn't like super popular at the school but I was like a medium maybe but I was raised in a super strict household where the only phone that I pretty much had was one that was able to call 911 and my parents and I especially was not allowed to be talking to boys. So Carson had the great idea of giving me his old phone and throughout the summer I would text him on there. Well, I started realize him getting really toxic. Anytime that he would see my Snapchat location change, he would be like, where are you going? Why didn't you tell me you were going here? So I started distancing myself a little bit from him. Also because our relationship was just moving way too fast. Within the first month of us dating, he was talking about wanting to marry me. Life for part two. Part two about how my ex-boyfriend accused me of cheating on him on an all-girls trip. So like I said, I started distancing myself from him because he became too attached and was just way too toxic. Well, I was also in a lot of clubs in school, and a few of them would require me to go on trips. Well, the one that I went on was an all-girls trip, and before I left, I texted Carson letting him know that I wouldn't have my phone all week. Well, on the last night of my trip, there was a girls and boys dance. There was like a group of boys from a different school that we were meeting up with, and I tried staying back at the cabin, but they wouldn't let me. So we started doing dances that required partners. So I was pretty much forced to dance with one of the boys. Well, when I came back home, I got a hundred texts from Carson calling me a bunch of nasty names, and you can probably guess them. And somebody got a picture of me dancing with one of the boys. 
And Carson sent it to me and said, we're done. So after that, I just ignored him. And then literally that night at 1 a.m., he was texting me saying, I miss you. Please come back to me. Like for part three. Part three about how my ex-boyfriend accused me of cheating on him on an all-girls trip. So like I said, I received over 100 messages from him. He got a picture of me dancing with one of the boys and said, we're done. And then at one in the morning, he's like, I miss you so much. Please don't leave me. Like I've been doing so bad while you were gone. So of course I didn't accept his apology and I just blocked him on all my social media. And the next day I wake up to messages on my Instagram, my Snapchat, my Facebook. Like who even uses that? Unless you're talking to family. Well, then Carson decides to tell everybody at my school about how I'm a lying, cheating scumbag. And now, three years later, no good guy from my school wants to date me. So now whenever I'm talking to a guy, I have to make sure that they're not affiliated with Carson in any way. But low-key, I had a really good glow up, so all the hot boys want to talk to me now. And Carson's pretty much still a scumbag. Story time about how I found out my husband was hooking up with men off of Craigslist. Disclaimer, this is not my story time. I sent him on Instagram. My husband and I have been married for five years. This man is the most prudish person I have ever met in my entire life. He never curses. He does not drink. Basically, he's never done anything naughty in his life. When we met, he was the perfect candidate for me. My parents are very religious and very strict. When they saw the way my husband was, basically super uptight, never wanting to do anything fun, they insisted that I marry him. So basically, this is all my parents' fault. To be honest with you guys, I never really was super attracted to him. But I knew that he would be a good provider. He's pretty high up in the company he works for, and he makes north of $300,000 per year. But I do own two of my own businesses, so it's not like I need him to survive. But my parents insisted on me marrying somebody who was already well off. And of course, one of my dreams is to become a mother, so I need a man who's going to be able to provide for me and my kids, especially when I'm pregnant. So we ended up getting married. Was there passion in chemistry? Not so much. But we did have a good time, and he would make me laugh. We essentially became really good friends. Up until I found some stuff on his laptop. Part two is that. Part two of how I found out my husband was hooking up with men off of Craigslist. Disclaimer is not my story time. I sent me on Instagram. One day while I was working from home, I needed to get on his laptop to check our cameras. I'd just gotten a new set of security cameras for our house. I needed to make sure that they were all working. I opened his laptop, type in the password, and it was wrong. I'd always had the same password for the past five years. I didn't bother texting him. Instead, I tried to guess. And because I know this man so well, I guessed it in the first try. But as soon as I log in, there's about five Craigslist windows open, all with similar titles. Male looking for male. Male interested in male company. This literally shook me to my core. You're telling me that I'm married to a gay man and that he's hooking up with men off of Craigslist? That's when I went ahead and checked his email, only to find that he had been sending pictures and other things to these men. Not only that, but he had met with two of them. I instantly printed out all the evidence. Like I said in part one, I'm not particularly attracted to my husband. I never have been. I really only married him because my parents pressured me into it. Here's what I did. Instead of just asking for a divorce, I wanted to humiliate him. I needed to make him pay. After printing everything out i sent it to his job and i sent it to his parents and my parents part three is up that's when i sent videos of my own husband hooking up with other men to his job my parents and his parents at this point i had been married to a man that i wasn't attracted to for five years only to find out that he was hooking up with other men off of craigslist remember i said in part one how prudish my husband was he always made himself seem like he was the perfect man like he had never done anything bad in his life but let me tell you some of the things i read in those emails and the pictures and the video disgusting no wonder he put off having kids for so long and no wonder he made me get on the pill because he never had the intention of having kids when everyone received their packages my husband called me super upset he said that he had only done it for about a week and that it was just him experimenting and he told me that his job put him on suspension my parents of course stopped speaking to him mother-in-law calls me on the phone and tells me that she had always known that he was gay and apparently they insisted on him not marrying me but he was set on having the perfect wife the perfect life we're obviously getting a divorce now and i'm getting all his money or at least i'm gonna try he's already claiming that i'm obsessed with him so he wants to get a restraining order i need to make him suffer even more how should i do this therefore we'll be up soon story time my best friend cheated on his girlfriend with me so a little background information so gavin and i have been best friends ever since we were little we lived in the same neighborhood and my parents and his grandparents were like pretty close i guess but like everybody in our neighborhood was close with each other and i always had a huge crush on him and i would try to like subtly tell him that i liked him but he would always be like, ooh, don't joke with me like that. Like, that's not true. And eventually, I just kind of got the hint that that was his way of telling me, I don't like you. Stop before I tell you in a mean way. So when we were in middle school, he was always having these like two-day relationships with all these girls and everything. And me, not so much because sis didn't have a glow up until she reached like her sophomore year in high school. And the thing was, I wasn't that best friend who would be like, ooh, don't date her, like she's ugly or anything like that. Like I would totally respect all of his relationships. 
even if they were two days long. But he would literally still block me. Well, the one day we were hanging out at his house, like for part two. Part two about how my best friend cheated on his girlfriend with me. So like I said, the one night I was at his house and he was on my phone and he was asking me who all these guys were on my Snapchat. And I told him that I had been talking to them and he was just being a super toxic. He was talking shit on every single one of them. So eventually I started dating this guy, Trey. And after that, he texted me saying that I was gross and everything else. When the next day, he literally got a girlfriend. But weirdly enough, he didn't block me that time. He actually started texting me more saying how him and his girlfriend were so happy together, da 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 da. And unlike him, I would be supportive. Well, the one night at 2 a.m., he came over my house and he was like, I don't have feelings for my girlfriend. And I'm like, okay, then why are you with her? And then he has the nerve to say, don't you get that I like you? Like, really? Well, eventually we cut off all communication and he was still with this girl oh well, the one night he asked me to come over and talk and we ended up doing the nasty and then he blocked me on everything after he said we should both leave our girlfriends and boyfriends well i ended up telling his girlfriend what we did and they also come to my family cookouts story time about how my boyfriend is abusive to his parents what should i do there was not my story time on sending me instagram my boyfriend and i've been dating for 11 months here's a little backstory we both work at the same company and live very far from our parents i try to go home once a month since my parents are only two hours away from me his parents live in a different country for that reason i haven't met his parents but he's met my parents and he's been completely respectful and really nice to them so i never suspected that he could be abusive to his parents so here's what happened we flew over to his parents and they are very rich his mom is an interior designer and their house is phenomenal his dad owns a couple of businesses and together they are very wealthy his parents went to pick us up at the airport and everything was fine until we got to their house they decided to give me a tour of their ginormous mansion that's when i noticed that my boyfriend was being kind of rude to them every time they would ask me a question he would answer and be like duh she likes pizza he even asked his mom to stop asking stupid questions i stopped him in his tracks and in front of his parents i said why are you being rude to your parents the look on his parents face was of shock and that's when i realized that they had never disciplined him. But then it got worse. Part two is up. Story time about how my boyfriend is abusive to his parents. Disclaimer is now my story time. I said on my Instagram. The look on his parents' face when I called him out for being rude to them was complete shock. After they gave me the tour of the house, we decided to sit down for dinner. They are so rich that they have their own chef. That's when the chef comes out and starts serving all the food. And as soon as my boyfriend sees what they served, he grabs his glass of water and bangs it against the table. He looks at both of his parents and says, What the fuck is wrong with you both? The color from their faces drain. That's when they said, I'm sorry, we didn't know he was going to make this. The chef decided to make a really fancy meatloaf. Apparently, he hates meatloaf then he said well tell him to make something else his mother gets up and runs to the kitchen and asks the chef to make him a burger because that's his favorite food which by the way i never even knew that he always told me his favorite food was indian his mom comes back from the kitchen then he looks at me and says you don't have to eat that shit if you don't want to I told him that he was being a brat and that i'd be happy to eat the meatloaf his parents look at me and smile my boyfriend just gets up from the table and runs away can you believe i had to chase after him part three is up Story time about how my boyfriend is abusive to his parents. What should I do? Disclaimer is not my story time. I said I mean on Instagram. That's when my stupid boyfriend runs away from the dinner table. So of course I have to chase him. And of course I'm angry at this point. I ask him why he's being so rude to his parents. Then he literally denies that he just did anything. His words were, you're reading too much into it. My parents are stupid anyway. I looked at him and I said, do you not see the mansion we're standing in? How did two stupid people manage to build this mansion, four businesses, and put you through school? He rolls his eyes at me and says, Jesus Christ, you sound like my parents. I told him that he was a privileged rat. You see, I come from a family where we don't have chefs and we don't have millions of dollars or a mansion. So I appreciate everything my parents did for me. I went back to the dining room and I told his parents it was nice to meet them, but that I could no longer be with their son. That's when his mom started begging me not to leave. It was hard, but I called an Uber and I went home. My boyfriend's been begging me to get back with him. He's trying really hard too. His parents are even offering to pay my student loans. I'm honestly confused now. What should I do? story time about how i crashed my dad's really expensive car so a little background information my mom had just got remarried to my stepdad three years ago and he was this rich asshole who owned a bunch of food trucks and thought he was the shit well at the time i also had a boyfriend and we had only been dating for like a month and a half well, my boyfriend would always beg me to let him drive my stepdad's car and i always said no because that was like his child like he had children he could care less about them his car was more important Anyway, so the one weekend my parents are out of town and one of my friends was throwing a graduation party. So that whole day my boyfriend was trying to talk me into taking the car and I already knew where my stepdad hid the keys. So I just decided I wouldn't drink that night and I would just take the car. He kept asking me if he could drive but clearly I said no because this kid literally told me that he crashed the first two cars that he had. So we get to the party, we're having a good time, and one of my friends tells me that everybody's taking pictures with my car outside. Like for part two. 
Part two about how I crashed my dad's very expensive car. So like I said, everybody's taking pictures of the car, but I decided to let it go at first. I mean, there was one point where I went outside just so that way I could kind of let everybody know, hey, you're taking pictures with my car. Well, half an hour later, my boyfriend and I decided to leave and he's obliterated. Like we probably got 50 feet from her house and then I had to stop the car so that way he could get out and throw up in somebody's yard anyway so he gets in the car we're on the way back to my house and my house was like a 20 minute drive away well we were five minutes from my house at this one intersection i get a green light and i go to make a right and i accidentally hit a car turning out of the bar parking lot so i'm literally freaking the fuck out and my boyfriend's in the seat next to me crying for some reason so the guy in the other car calls the cops cops show up they call my stepdad and my mom my boyfriend went to the hospital he had alcohol poisoning well my boyfriend told his mom that it was all my fault and i'm grounded for six months this is how i found out my dad was following me on only fans disclaimer is not my story time it's not on instagram my mom and dad had me when they were really young my mom was 17 and my dad was 19 for some reason my mom doesn't like talking about him so i never really found out exactly how they broke up all i know is that they stayed together until i was five years old something really bad happened and then my mom kicked him out of the house like i said i don't even know what happened when I was 12 years old, he begged my mom to come back, and she let him live in the apartment we had. But he's pretty much a deadbeat. He didn't help my mom pay for the bills. He didn't even want to get a job. He even went as far as begging my mom to become a stripper. He said that she would make way more money than the job she had. She was a secretary at the time. When I was 15, he left our house again. Never got a bad feeling from him when he was living with us, though. With a lot of hard work, my mom was able to put me through college. I graduated and I got a really good job. I bought my mom and me a house and we moved in together. Then COVID happened and I lost my job. A friend suggested I start OnlyFans and I decided to do it. I started making a lot more money than I ever thought I would. Some months I was making around $20,000. This one guy would send me $1,000 every single week. In exchange for pictures. Part two is up. This is how I found out my dad was following me on OnlyFans. Disclaimer is not my story time. Let him on Instagram. So this one guy started sending me $1,000 every single week. In exchange, I would send him private photos. Everything was totally fine until he started asking me questions. He would ask me things like, what's your favorite movie? What's your favorite dessert? Because it's OnlyFans, I never really answered honestly. But then one day he told me, you love The Little Mermaid, don't you? And I was like, what? Because The Little Mermaid was my favorite movie as a kid. I watched it at least three times a week when I was a kid. First, I thought it was a cousin playing a joke on me. So I decided to block them. The next day, I get another message. This one says, I remember how you used to love hot dogs. That's when I really shit myself. Because my dad and I would make hot dogs every single Friday. It was our thing together. Like I said, he was a deadbeat, so he couldn't afford anything more than cheap hot dogs. And that's when he said, I have a confession. And before I could reply, he said, I'm your dad. I felt so disgusted. I blocked him and then blocked him from my cell phone too. That's when he sends me a long text message explaining why he signed up to my OnlyFans. He said that he was just trying to get to know me. That all he really wanted was to get me back as his daughter. Then and why ask for nudes? Part 3 is up. This is how I found out my dad was following me on OnlyFans. This claim is not my story time as sending me on Instagram. As soon as I read his long text message about why he signed up, I once again blocked him. 20 minutes later, there's a knock on my door. Yep, it's my fucking father. I started knocking on the door so hard my neighbors came out. Called 911 and they came within a minute. I live in an area where there aren't too many people. So my house is really easy to find. Saw so my dad walk to the backyard and try to get in through the back. That's when a cop stopped him and asked him what he was doing. Then he told the cop that I had invited him over. Then the cop comes to my door and asked me if I had invited him. I told him I didn't. Then I told the cop about OnlyFans. My dad was so ashamed he actually denied it. But of course I had all the receipts. I showed the cop my phone and the cop told him that he needed to leave me alone. He left my house and I didn't have the heart to tell my mom. But later that night I see another person sign up to my OnlyFans. Turns out it was my dad again. This time he was offering me $3,000 for more pictures. And he confessed that he couldn't help but love me as a woman because I didn't grow up with him. Excuse me sir, you raised me for half of my childhood. I wanted to get a restraining order but the judge says it's not that easy. So now I'm considering closing my my OnlyFans. I don't think it's fair though. What should I do?